Hey, this is Blair Barnhart, founder and executive director of the International Pavement Management Association with your tip of the week. And I've got Brian Fricks with me from Rockdale County to talk to you about... It's time for your ITMA tip of the week, where we teach pavement managers just like you how to do more with less. Here's your host, Blair Barnhart. Peter Scarification. <laughs> did, right. I, did I guess it? <laughs> yes. Did I guess it? That's right. Brian has been a big advocate of the three-legged stool. Uh, he's done plenty of bids for microsurfacing and some of the other surface treatments and a lot of the other in-place asphalt recycling. In Georgia specifically, we've seen the full depth reclamation take off for several years now, Brian. I'd say that's a mainstay in the, in the industry now. But what we're seeing is a sudden surge for counties just like Brian to do the surface recycling. That's one of the three sub-disciplines. Remember, we've got the resurfacing, remixing, and the repaving operations. And part of that uh, group of hot in place subdisciplines is the reheat process. But today, Brian's gonna talk to you specifically about his experience with surface recycling, hot in place recycling here in uh, the Rockdale County. Uh, well, first of all, um, the if, if you compare, uh, you know, do a cost analysis on, on the heat scarification versus milling and in layer mill and overlay, you're going to find that the, the heat scarification is, is much more cost effective, number one. Number two, it's eco-friendly, obviously. That's that's okay. that's a big deal, uh, you know, for all you green folks out there. Yeah. Um, well, it, this, I mean, we're saving trees and we're saving uh, carbon footprint because absolutely. we're not hauling... Well, first of all, we're not making a whole bunch of new asphalt, a Absolutely. bunch of new rock. Right. Guess that's a big part of it. And we're not burning diesel fuel to get a whole bunch of new material to the job site, right? That's correct. Uh, you know, and, and, the, and the other thing is, is it's a really fast operation. You know, it's a single pass operation. Uh, heats the road back up, uh, melts the asphalt. It adds some asphalt rejuvenating agent to it um, and uh, provides, a, you know, a year to three years of crack mitigation, depending on your underlying structure. Okay. Uh, in advance of the surface recycling operation, just wanted to point out a couple of best practices here in terms of this particular project. This is a four lane undivided uh, collector, I guess you would say, probably 30,000, 40,000 cars a day out here. The manhole frame and grates have remained exactly in place. So once the hot in place surface recycling has been done and the one and a quarter inch has been placed, riser rings or adjustments will be made to the manholes but what I want to point out here is that along the gutter line the both edges these drive lanes have been uh, taper milled so we've gone from inch and a half on the gutter pan here out to zero just as we get close to the first uh, 12 foot division here the two center lanes environmentally uh, distress, block cracking, a lot of weathering and, and the likes of that. The mix is on the, pretty much on the fine side with all these uh, southeastern mixes it seems as opposed to maybe some of the coarser mixes that I see in the northeastern region. In any case, as you'll notice when we do the surface recycling down here, we'll have the travel lanes on both sides of the gutter back down to the original grade to allow for the inch and a quarter inlay. And notice I say inlay, so in terms of best practices, when we talk about milling these edges down and putting a mix into the milled area or the void space, we call that a mill and inlay as opposed to a mill and overlay. This hot in place surface recycling in this case, the contractor is Gallagher uh, for the hot in place and the contractor is C.W. Matthews for the inlay. But the point is, is that because we're using three or four inches of 19 millimeter binder, we'll have a really good structure underneath for the surface recycling. However, if this was going to be an HA5 or a microsurfacing on top, as opposed to a inch and a half overlay or inch and a half inlay, you'd probably be best to go with a 12.5 or even a 9.5 millimeter patch in that area there that's been milled and deep patched. So. Um, you know, you, you got to patch all your structural deficient areas on the roadway, uh, which we which we did with a, uh, a local contractor, um, and then the the out of town contractor Gallagher Asphalt came into town, and and uh, there are others out there. I'm not advocating just for them, but there are others out there, uh, depending on uh, where you're at in the United States. But um, they came into town, uh, heat scarified this road right here, uh, and then we had our local contractor uh, come back with hot mix. Now that's not the only surface treatment you can put back on this. Right. We've got uh, microsurfacing as an option as well. 
um, and another treatment that's that we've kind of been recently looking into an HA5 which is a high density mineral bond okay. uh, you know we're considering that as well uh, but uh, you know we, we are letting another contract here uh, in the next few months where we are going to heat, heat scarify some roads and we will be microservicing those roads or even providing a hot mix over the top uh, so there are options out there depending on your budget um, and, and I'm sure that's a big issue for everyone out there is is you know how to save money well, and I think a lot of times people uh, really they just keep doing the same thing over and over and nothing against, I mean, the other county engineers out there, Brian, I mean, they just maybe don't know of anything different. Look at us, unless we're out there on the front end with IVMA trying to learn all these new techniques, how would we keep up? That's so, correct. You know, you got to feel for these people that they don't know all the different options. I'm so glad you're here today to discuss one of those options. Again, this is only one tool in the toolbox. That's correct. Uh, I mean, if you look at IVMA Academy, you talk about this stuff for 70 or 80 hours online, but... You know, in this five-minute session for IPMA Tip of the Week, one thing, surface recycling, could save you upwards of a million dollars this year, Brian. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we're looking right now at, at 30%, but, you know, 30% of a million dollars, that's quite a bit of money. Absolutely. Um, so, in recapping here, just so you guys know, in Georgia, hey, what's up? Uh, in Georgia alone, and I know this is going on in states all across America, but Specifically in Georgia, over the last three or four years, I think we've got upwards of 75 miles of roadway at the county and the city level done with the surface recycling hot in place recycling method. What we have here is the surface recycling hot in place operation. In this particular example, we've got the two units. We've got one preheater and a heater unit with the integral screed, the paving screed attached to it. So. The first unit is going to heat that asphalt up to about 270 degrees Fahrenheit. And the second heater is going to heat the asphalt up again sequentially to about 330 to 340 degrees Fahrenheit, at which time the tines can get in there, the spring-loaded tines. The rejuvenating agent can be added with the rotary spinner cups. And at that point, the material is lubricated with a rejuvenating agent, softened with the sequential heating. Now remember, we don't want to go heat things up too quickly, like we don't want to roast a marshmallow over an open fire on a campsite, like instantaneously, because it'll burn. We, but if we gradually heat it, then we soften up that asphalt and introduce the rejuvenating agent into the final sequence of heaters. Now. When we're doing extra depth or in colder climates or in wet conditions, the contractors may elect to bring in a third and maybe even a fourth preheater unit and spread that train out. But for this particular example is a single preheater followed by a heater unit, which is all within, I'm gonna say about 100 or 110 feet of area that they're taking up. So you can see this is a four lane undivided collector with 40 about 30 or 40,000 cars a day on it also and in terms of traffic I think it's worth noting here that we got 30 or 40,000 cars a day you don't seem yes. to have any upper limit to the to the roads in other words there's no cutoff point here in Cobb no for the hot not at all no but it's working out really well. We're pleased with it. Okay. Uh, pilot project was uh, in in 07. That's a long time. Is, uh, it was. I it, driving around. It was. Uh, we we did a, a pilot project, 50,000 square yards, okay. uh, overlaid it, and to this day, there's no um, there's no problems whatsoever. Oh, that's uh, stuff. My math is mm -hmm. first thing in the morning and all. So six years. Six years. This so, summer it will be six years. So this summer will be six years. The same type of. Uh, Except it wasn't milled, was it? Or was it curb? Milled? It wasn't milled. It was a curb subdivision. Okay. And and uh, we actually just went the surface course okay. um, and took all that out instead of patching. So we saved all those patching dollars. Yeah. It was a subdivision that was uh, was alligatored. It was stressed, but we didn't have any uh, deflection or any any base failures. Okay. So it was an ideal candidate for that. But the and no so no reflective cracking uh, in a subdivision street. And, you know we still have the busy trash compactor trucks and. Yeah. Uh, the Home Depot trucks and likes that going through these subdivisions here. Uh, and usually, so you know, if you're not from the southeast, a lot of times these subdivisions, like they only have one means of egress, one means of that's cars true. coming in and out. So that's a pretty good testament if you've got right. very little, if any, crack uh, mitigation uh, cracks coming up after mm -hmm. six years. And, so. yeah. and you don't have all the, uh, 
the, the trucks and the milling crew in and out of the neighborhoods. That being said, I don't think we're here to, in fact, I always say I think we're actually going to, if we adopt the three-legged stool, we'll actually get more hot mix for the contractors to put down because you'll be able to stretch your right. budget that much further. Well, not every road's a candidate for this process, and right. so you've got to know which which is good and which is not. And uh, and so, we and we do rely on our contractors to assist. We've got uh, two of the largest paving contractors um, in the southeast that are headquartered right here in, in Cobb County. Um, and, uh, and and this is going through those paving contracts. Those those contractors are the prime, and uh, and so you can use uh, this. We've got a spec written. Okay. We put a line item in the bid, and uh, and so we leave it to the contractor to select uh, who's um, who who they want, uh, so long as they're they're approved and right and uh, right. you know in the industry. So awesome. awesome. Well, in wrapping up, um, thanks so much for joining sure. us, Mike. The uh, and, and you'll probably get emails from people from all over the world with the fine. Hypno Academy learners and all. And I encourage you guys, you know, get on the email. Mike will give you his email address here in a second. And uh, just get on there and contact him uh, and ask him any questions. That he, He's already been through this for the last five or six years. So uh, if you're just jumping into any of the recycling techniques, I think right. Mike is a great candidate for question and answer periods. Um, I'm sure that uh, along the way he's learned a few things or two, and I think we're all learning in this business, Mike, on a regular basis. What advice or what words of wisdom might you have for a county in a similar situation with you, with, you know, a couple of maybe, well, in his case, I think he only has one paving contractor locally. Mm -hmm. They want to keep them involved in the loop, but they also want to branch out and do things that are more cost-effective and eco-efficient. Uh, what words of advice for, would you well, offer a county uh, such as that? It all, and again, it depends on the on the on the streets that you're you're looking to do. Is, and again, uh, this is a great process. Um, most of our roads, our our candidates would support this yep. this this process. There are areas that if you've got base failures, uh, if you've got other problems, uh, you don't need a surface treatment. You need to mill it up and replace right, it. Right. There are areas that um, that otherwise can. If they've never been paved and and it's just a, a light overlay, you may not need anything, right. but an edge mill if it's curb. Yep. So there are a lot of different uh, scenarios, uh, but it's definitely something Cobb County is has adopted. We're going to um, we're going to keep it in the in the program. Um, you know, we Cobb is is has got a very aggressive uh, multi-year paving program under our SPLOST, mm -hmm. and a large percentage of our SPLOST, upwards of a hundred million dollars is dedicated to resurfacing okay. uh, and, and rehabbing our streets. Uh, would you mind giving the learners your email address? Uh, email is mike.laner, L-E-H-N-E-R, at Cobb County, that's one word, dot O-R-G, mike.laner at Cobb County dot O-R-G. You can call me in my office, 770-528-3681. And traffic control is running quite fine. Again, sequentially heating that asphalt, gradually getting it introduced to the screed and the spring-loaded tines where it can be scarified with the spring-loaded tines and then compacted uh, as conventional asphalt would be compacted. Now again, just as a reminder, we're in the outside lanes here that have already been milled by the contractor, which in this case was C.W. Matthews. And as a result, those outside lanes are going to turn out to be ever so slightly coarser because of the underlying 19 millimeter stone. But once the, uh, in this case, the Gallagher Asphalt is the subcontractor to C.W. Matthews, the, this surface recycling contractor here, they're going to actually get out here in these two middle lanes and produce a very fine mat, similar to that of a brand new asphalt, which is all going to be the leveling course, and you heard Mike talk about this from Cobb County and Brian from uh, Rockdale County, this is going to provide an excellent crack mitigation layer to the underlying cracks and just increase the life and basically ensure that this asphalt overlay, this 12.5 millimeter overlay, which incidentally the contractors have been using a shuttle buggy to put down, so it's going to be an incredible ride out here with a very durable asphalt for long service life. Let's go take a closer look here. Well, that goes to show you, you know, it's just, it's, it's making its way here to the southeast. More and more individuals and municipalities, agencies are, are, are finding the value in this. And, uh, you know, I think it's, 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 it's coming, you know, it's, it's going to make its way. And, and more and more people are going to start investing in this. And, uh, you know, more of the locals are going to have to uh, 
figure out how to how to bring this equipment to their to their operations you, you, you just know? don't have enough money to go around anymore at the county level do you that's I mean, right exactly not, not saying you ever had enough to begin with but uh, one thing for certain brian has done a great justice to his county by doing the pavement management the pavement evaluation uh, pavement preservation and in place recycling uh, kudos to you and, and for those of you who don't know this brian also sits on the ipma advisory board um, so for all of you ipma academy learners listening in brian will be one of the people reviewing your IPMA Academy certification for APM. But in any case, uh, just wrapping up, Brian, if anyone's back at home watching the tip of the week, if they have any questions that are sitting on the fence, what advice would you have for them? Well, you know, you can you can feel free to shoot me an email. Um, you know, if, it, if, if you have any questions that, uh, you know, Blair hasn't covered or are you just like a little more information uh, on the heat scarification process, um, my email address is brian, B-R-I-A-N dot F-R-I-X at rockdellcounty.org and of course Blair's always an excellent resource uh, there you go yeah. uh, so either one of us uh, I don't think they want to hear from me anymore <laughs> they don't okay <laughs> they well, want to hear from the real people <laughs> well hey uh, I'd be glad to, to provide any help I can uh, we've certainly had our help along the way great so any anybody needs help or questions uh, putting their bid documents together Brian's been a great resource to all the people here in the southeast thanks so much for that Brian no problem and thanks for joining us today on the ITMA Tip of the week. We'll see All you guys right. next time. This is Blair and Brian Fricks. Thanks. Signing, Signing out. out. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs>